All right, the next section of tools that you need to know for surface modeling and 3D code are the adjustment tools. Now, many of these are the same as the voxel equivalents that we saw earlier. You know, your, your move, your pose, the cutoff tools, the instancer, those are all serve the exact same function, so I'm not going to discuss them in this video. But there are a few unique ones here that are unique to surface objects. The very first of which is close hole. Now occasionally, although it's very rare for this to happen, you might see that there is a hole in your mesh. Either through some type of modeling that you've tried to do, uh, you have caused polygons to overlap in such a way that sometimes they get deleted when the software tries to remesh them using live clay. And when that happens, you'll get a hole like this where you can see through your mesh. The close hole tool can close that hole. So it uses the shape stroke mode. So if I just draw a little shape around here, and you see it goes away. Let's tackle this one as well. And there you go. So that's close hole. Now the next unique one here is called noise. I'm going to talk about that one last. Then you also have one down here called mesh doctor. Since the mesh when you're working in surface mode may not be reskinned every single time you you draw on it, uh, there might occasionally be some problems with it. So let me just explain a scenario where that might happen. So if I sculpt down on one side, sculpt down on another, and then sculpt in, you may see some problems. Namely, you can see how jagged it's getting over here. Those are polygons that are overlapping with each other. That can be very bad. Although usually this can be fixed by just smoothing, sometimes that's not always the case. So 3D Coat provides a tool here called Mesh Doctor that will just look for these sorts of parameters and you can fix them. It's not perfect, but it does fix many of the more blatant issues. Again, that's here because it's unique to surface mode. Now the next really interesting one is bridge. So in order for that to make sense, I'm going to go to primitives. I'm going to just add another sphere right next to it. There we go. Now you can still add primitives inside of surface mode. But if I go to bridge, the way that works is that I can paint an area on one mesh and I could paint it on the other. I'll smooth it out. This one's a little less smooth because I did the whole clean clay on that. But if I hit modify here, whoops, sorry, not modify, apply, then you'll see it bridges and it creates a very sharp crease when it does. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be across two objects like this, but it is. it certainly works better when it does. Now a few options with that, I'll just paint those areas again. You can also increase the arc of the bridge, so if I hit apply, then you'll see there's it's very straight right now because the arc value is fairly low. If I increase that, then you'll see it's a lot, uh, there's a lot more bend to it. You can also change the method, so if I change it to like min angle and hit apply, and you see it becomes very twisty. Very interesting shape. For the most part, I'll just leave it at the default probe. Oops. Apply and you'll get something like that. You can also adjust the smoothness value for how smooth you want it to bend between those two. So that's bridge. Now, noise. Noise is very interesting. And I'm going to, because this topology on this one is very non-uniform, I'm just going to delete it using the cutoff tool. There we go. Now, with noise. This applies random noise to an object. It's very useful if you're trying to make something like a rock. So let me delete. And once again, this is a curve just like we've seen throughout this series. They all work the same. 
but this just applies random, well, pseudo-random surface detail. So you can change the degree. See, very intense right there. And you can change the characteristic size. Isn't that an interesting effect? So I like this. And then also the sharpness. So you see we can make it a very blobby change. Or we can make it, I'm going to leave this fairly high. We can make it very rough. Now by itself this looks, it's okay as a base, but it's not, it doesn't look very natural. And that's where this curve comes in handy. I can click to add points, and you'll see how it changes. If I add this, you'll see how there's a sharp drop off there, now we have a sharp drop off here. It's a little difficult to explain how it is that these work. You just kind of have to play around with the curves until you get something that you like. But basically there are white values and there are black values to the noise that are generated. The white values are the ones that go up the most and the black values are the one that, ones that go up the least. So what this is saying is that this is saying the areas in the middle, I want them in this case to go up super high or I want the values in the middle to actually be really low. So you can get a lot of interesting effects like this. So as you see, now we've got this very sharp ridge right in the middle, and that is reflected in the noise. I could decrease the displacement degree. And you can see if I just make it very subtle, then it actually can start to look a bit more natural. Now obviously that isn't too terribly natural, but you get the idea, hopefully. Now you'll notice that this is happening as I'm adjusting it. That's because I have Apply Real Time turned on. That means if I go to another tool, the noise has been applied. If I turn it off, then obviously it's not being applied. I have to actually click Apply to make this happen. Now if you're using a tablet and you don't have Apply Real Time turned on, little word of warning, if you click the apply button by tapping on your tablet, it tends to get applied two or three times. That's just something I've noticed in the past. It may not be a problem for you, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Because as you see, if we apply it more times than we need to, we can get a lot of problems. So those are the surface adjustment tools and most of these, op just about all of these object tools actually and the commands are the exact same as they are in the voxel room. And with that, that is all that you need to know about using the surface tools, using the voxel tools. Uh, that pretty much concludes the sculpting portion of this tutorial series. Uh, now it is time to move on to retopologizing and getting your project ready for other applications.